Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. So I've got some cucumbers that I started inside a couple weeks ago, and now we're reaching the time where we don't have any frosts, uh, no chance of frost, and the temperatures have stayed above 50 now and will stay above 50 for the next foreseeable future uh, at night. And so it's time to start planting them. Now, I don't have a lot of space in my raised beds, which would be the best place to put them, but I do have these cloth pots where I can put some potting soil in, construct a trellis, temporary type structure that I can then take down after these are done growing. They're very quick growers. Um, and so I'm only gonna have these up for maybe two, maybe three months. And then I can start a succession plant, start some more seeds in the raised beds once I have room and take some stuff down. So I'm gonna bring you guys in. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here and let's get to it. So this is basically kind of what I'm doing. I'm gonna have four pots, four different types of cucumbers and see which kind of grows best in my climate and which one I like the most. And then next year I can grow more of one or two of those varieties. Oh, well, I had that up. <laughs> we'll put this down for now. You could see the idea of what we're doing. I'm basically making a little teepee with it. So I've got these two bags that already had something growing in it and the stuff growing in it, I'm not worried too much about cucumbers growing with it. It was lettuce. There's really no disease that passes on to cucumbers with that. And then this had carrots. It might have been this one with carrots, I'm not sure. But one of these carrots, one of them lettuce. And carrots don't really have anything that passes on to cucumbers either, at least not where I'm at. But we do need to amend this soil and we're gonna add a little bit more, kind of give them a lot of room to grow. And by the way, these are 10 gallon grow bags. I get them just like this from Amazon. This is the brand name and I will link below to where you can get them. They're 10 gallons, you get a 12 pack, and it's like $23. So they end up being two bucks or right, right under $2 each. And so that's a fairly good deal, but let's go ahead and amend this soil. I've got this fertilizer, this is a 624, it's made from chicken manure. We're just gonna sprinkle some of that on, okay? And same thing here with this one. We have gotta amend it because the nutrients have been zapped from what was growing in it before. Then we're gonna add some blood meal. So this is all nitrogen. We're not gonna add a lot, okay? But we want to get them having a good start. So I'm gonna give just a light sprinkle. I'm not gonna do a lot here, but maybe a quarter handful per, okay? Not very much. But the main thing here is gonna be this. This is bone meal. Bone meal is all phosphorus. Mostly, there's a little bit of nitrogen, but mostly phosphorus. And this is gonna be root development. And so we want that, especially when they first start out. We wanna get them nice and healthy. So we're sprinkling about a full handful kinda in this. And now we need to add a little bit more soil. Now this has some nutrients in it. Since all this has been spent, I'm adding some. When we add this to the other pots, we won't be adding the fertilizer just yet. We will be using some liquid fertilizer on top of all of these right now because this is not bio ready just yet. But this already has fertilizer in it. It's ready, it comes with, made with compost. Okay, so, uh, you know, it's already, already got the nutrients. And then we're just gonna start scooping some of this out. So all of our pots are now full, and now we're gonna plant. So this is the homemade pickle. We'll put this one right here. And that way we know what variety it is. I'm gonna put it over here so I can, uh, they're gonna be growing this direction. And then separate this from the pot, dig a little hole. And we wanna plant this pretty deep because you can see those are roots starting here up high. And it'll root all the way to the first I mean, it'll root all this as well, but we can plant as deep as we want. So we're going to get real down, or we're going to get down real deep. Stand this upright and backfill around it. And now we've got a really strong root system. Now I'm going to push down a little bit. Of course, we want nice airy soil, but right around it, we push down to have good soil contact, make sure that there's no big air pockets or anything. And there we go, that one's planted. 
So I've got two that are rather small and two that are rather big. So this one and this one are smaller than this one in the homemade pickle. They're a little taller. So I'm gonna put the taller ones on the back here because the sun comes up over this way, okay? So I wanna make sure the taller ones are on the back. They get light, they're not being blocked. So we'll do the same thing here. Let's get the marker so we know which one this is. And by the way, this one's the Bait Alpha. This is a hybrid, okay? And I hear that it produces a ton of fruit and they're burpless, so that's good. That means a less chance of getting bitter. All right, so this next one is the Tender Green Burpless. And then last is this, it's called Tokiwa. It, I think it's a Japanese one. They're like long and thin, I think. And I uh, wanted to give it a try. We'll see how it does. Now we need to build the trellis. Oh, and super important, when you first plant right away, it's gonna take us a while to build this trellis. So I wanna make sure that they have a little bit of water. They were pretty dry already, and then I'm putting them in dry soil. So we'll just water right there. Not a whole lot because it'll make it heavy. It'll be hard to move this, but just a little bit around the plant. You don't want these drying out, not even for an hour. You can see this one, even though already the leaf is starting to kind of not do well. Again, they were from the inside, right? So they were growing in easier conditions than, and then they come out and now they got the blaring sun that is gonna dry them out. So I went over to Tractor Supply. So I was gonna get cattle panel at Tractor Supply and then build a trellis with tractor, with cattle panel uh, and T-posts, but they had this for $9 each. Um, and it's about the right size that I was looking for. I was gonna cut down the cattle panel and plus the cattle panel didn't fit well in my car. So I don't have a truck. So I'm just gonna try to build it with this. It's a little more flimsy and I'm gonna make an A-frame. So I want this T-post. We're gonna start it right in line with this raised bed here. And I'm gonna put it in at an angle like so. So that way then I'll put another one in and then we'll get, we'll do four along here. So. We'll get these first two in first. Early mornings, I'm thinking this is gonna block the sunlight. I mean, it's fine. Uh, they need, do need eight hours and by about 10 o'clock, this won't be shaded anymore. So that should be fine. And then we've got all afternoon. So I think we're good. I might wanna scoot it out just slightly, make it in line maybe with this one. That'll work. Let's do that. <laughs> At least the front ones here will get a ton of sun. Maybe the back ones won't, but Let's do that. I think that's where we're gonna put it. So, let me get my T-post driver. So simple, T-post driver. If you haven't used one of these before, it's just got a hole in the side and it's capped at the top and it's super heavy. Now these are five foot T-posts by the way. So, you put them at an angle right here. So then you just put this over top. As you can see, T-posts, they're shaped like a T this way, right? So it's flat on this side, pointy on this side, and this side has all these little nubs that you can connect stuff to and tie or whatever. So we'll do that. So I'm gonna keep it at an angle when I hammer this down. So you just lift it and pound down. And then at the bottom here, you can see it's got these little, um, these little barb kind of things. And if you get that into the ground, it's not gonna come out. But I don't think we even need to do that because they're gonna be resting on each other and I'll tie them together. So, so I mean, that's holding itself up even with this heavy thing on it. Let me see. Yeah, I can't even, I'd say that's pretty good. Not gonna be the perfect angle because I've gotta be able to drive this. So I gotta come off of the other one. All right, so now we've got the two ends. We'll bring them together like this and tie them. This T-post comes with wire. There we go. We'll just use this. Waste not, want not. These bundles, when you get a bundle, by the way, from Tractor Supply, they give you T-post clips. Now I'm just gonna push these a little closer together. There we go. And now we can... There we go, we got ourselves a little 
end piece A-frame kind of thing. So that's tied on. Now we can see where we're going to be putting the next T-post. Like so. You know, the other thing I could do is just use this as a forget this thing. Use it for something else, yeah. I'll put this right there. So I know that's where I got to put the T-post. We'll just drive this right in. That can hook, that can hook. A little tight. Push my direction, like this way. Like, but this way, like push it. Can you go like this and push? Mm. Not gonna happen. All right, thank you, hon. So I'm not sure about this, guys. Now that I'm looking at it, this is just all crooked. I don't like this. It's it's not it's not gonna be super stable. That's not gonna work. This cucumbers will weigh this down. It'll want to push. It'll come into it. That's not gonna work. I'm gonna remove this, guys. This is not gonna work. And we can use this for something else. All right, so this is jute fiber. And we are going to just make our own trellis. So we'll start at the top here. Bind it up with one, two, three, four, five rows. And then this one is just a single because it's a little short right now. Okay, but once it gets it tall enough, I want it to be able to rest on that till it finds these doubles. And then I can take that off because that's gonna get in the way of the trunk of this. Once that grows really big, I can remove the bottom if I need. Um, so if it gets in the way, but there we go. So now it's gonna start binding up there and I gotta do the other side now. I've got all these up. I've got all the cucumbers up next to it. You can see these are just shy of being able to reach up to that first wire or the first rope. However, if you look, the top ones here are just really loose, but if I pull back, then they tighten up. So I'm gonna put some stakes. I've got some of these. I'm gonna put them in the ground over here and on the other side, and then I'm gonna tie a rope to it and get it really tight. And I'm putting it in at an angle like this, because it's gonna hold better. That's not gonna work. I hit a rock. I gotta get it down really deep, so. We'll just use this jute fiber. We're gonna take this, we're gonna make a hitch kind of thing. Uh, we're gonna make, I don't know what they call it, a trucker's thing, or I, I forgot exactly, but we'll tie a, a knot like so. And then I'm gonna come around here. First, we need to cut this, give us our, ourselves some room. Bring this taut and then we come through this loop that we made. If you look, now we've got a pulley system and we can tighten this fairly easy. Let's come up over those. So we're not putting a lot of pressure. Boy, that's pulling up, isn't it? All right, sorry, my battery died there. But anyway, we tighten this. This is nice and taut. This is still loose but that's because that pulled this one over. So we've got it kind of angled this direction now. Now, if we pull this, then both have tension. It's gonna pull them out. Now, it tightens itself. So we're, oh, probably need a stronger thing for that. The street fiber broke, so it's not the strongest stuff in the world. That's probably good. It's pretty tight. Now, then we'll, Pull this backwards. We can tighten it a little more. We don't want to break it like we just did. I'm going to hold it all together. I'm going to come around and just make a half hitch and come around and make another half hitch over everything. 
like so. And one more. There we go. So tight ish, tight ish. It's not perfect. A little bit more would have been better, but that's about the best I can do with this kind of fiber. Now, if I could go and get something that's a little stronger, which I will, maybe paracord would work. You could really tighten down paracord and get that super strong and then pull this, that would pull this outward quite a bit and strengthen that, which I will do. This is what I had right now. I gotta go find myself some thin paracord and probably a good idea anyway to have a bright color so we don't trip on this as we walk by. Oh, one other thing I wanna mention, it's a good idea to put mulch on top, even though it's in a pot, that'll help kind of keep the moisture in. Okay, it is the next morning and it's time to fertilize these. Could have done it yesterday. I decided to spend that time replacing these cords here. And these are got really tight. And while there's a little bit of give, these are much tighter, so. Um, a lot better and look at the top one the top one was like hanging and so it looks a lot better this has really pulled these back so this is gonna work I always do this guys if you guys watch the channel um, this is my go-to fertilizer the fish plant food this is a liquid fertilizer now granted um, that other fertilizer I added the granules those aren't readily available right away this is so this will give them a quick boost it'll also help start breaking down some of that other granule fertilizer that I gave them yesterday because it's got some beneficial microbes in it that help help break that stuff down and then this was more bloom so this is a 01010 so it says no nitrogen, but it's all potassium and phosphorus. Great for root development right in the beginning. And then this is nitrogen with a little bit of potassium phosphorus. So this ends up when you do it, it ends up like um, a 5 11, 11 basically. And this is a 6126. And I always add a little bit of this. Usually when I'm doing both of those, I add a little less of this. So one full gallon is one ounce so that fills this up to there i do this half a little more than halfway there we go so this is 0.6 okay so that's where i've got this is 0.6 filled but this is per gallon this is a one and a half gallon so i'm actually doing a little less than it calls for so you know this will end up adding another three, six, three or something like that, roughly, uh, not exact. And it's okay if you hit the leaves when it's early in the morning because those will dry out before the end of the day. And then also the sun won't scorch them. They'll be mostly dry by the time that sun is really hot. Of course, it depends on what time of the year. Here we get, sometimes here we get up to a hundred and something degrees by you know before noon so it's been about a week and a half since i planted these and they're finally starting to take off and grow in fact i've got a couple flowers as well on some of these now the one doing the worst is this one right here this is the toka tokina or something like that and that's the japanese cucumber that's the one that's slowest to get going we had some really bad wind the other day and it whipped around and broke off some of these leaves. Actually, all of them had that issue. That one took the most amount of damage just in the place that it's located with the wind. Um, it was really intense, guys. I and mean, we had a little bit of hail. These hadn't attached on to my supports yet. And so they were just whipping around and it damaged them pretty bad, but they're, they're making a bounce back. It's been about three or four days since then. Got a whole bunch of new growth right here starting on that one. And then these grew from like here up. So these are a little faster. This is that burpless tender sweet. So that one's doing really good. This one is doing really good as well. We've got some flowers on this one as well. And this one is that homemade pickle. So unfortunately though, I've seen a couple vine borers flying around so i've been coming through i've been looking around daily trying to see if i can find any other eggs make sure i get those pulled off and smashed because we do not want vine borers 
Um, we also have this kind of thing going on, which is, uh, I hadn't seen that before in some others. Maybe it's just too hot. I'm not sure, but it seems like the stems are getting kind of weird on one side. It's green here, it's white on the other, and all of them are doing it, including, as you can see here, right there, with my summer squash. So that's, you know, something concerning. I'm not sure if that's really an issue I need to worry about too much. By the way, I did find a couple vine borer eggs on this right here. So I know they're around, so I'll have to keep a watch out. It is a slow start. They have a little bit of a, you know, transplant shock in a way. But now that they're starting to really grow, I mean, almost daily I'm seeing new growth now. So probably in a week, we'll get these to reach up to this one. And then within a month, we'll have these mostly filled out. And hopefully we'll start getting some cucumbers pretty soon. Excuse the mess here. That wind knocked this whole thing down off of my cabbage. I just haven't had a chance to set it up. By the way, guys, broccoli head. And actually knocked over my broccoli plants too. They were sticking straight up. They were nice and healthy. And then that wind just knocked everything over. But we got some broccoli still, still growing. Hopefully the cabbage does well. Um, but that's for another video. So excuse the mess though. But this uh, has been working well. It's still real taut. These are all quite taut. They're not perfectly taut, but they're gonna hold a cucumber plant just fine. And so stay tuned. I'll, I'll keep you guys updated over the next couple months on how this progresses and how this grows. And I will definitely bring you guys back for my first harvest. Well, if you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. I will see you guys on the next video. Now you try to escape the daily grind.